Annyeong, welcome to the Cryptonomatron. This is the sixth video in our Korean Crypto Week here on the Cryptonomatron channel, and it just wouldn't be the same without a video on ICON, the South Korean behemoth, the biggest cryptocurrency, the biggest blockchain platform in Korea. So here it is. And, you know, I'm very, very bullish on it. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that. Why am I bullish on it? Why do I believe it's going to challenge Ethereum? Why do I believe it is going to be a top five cryptocurrency in the future? Well, watch this video and find out. So if you're new to the channel and you're into ICOs, cryptocurrency, blockchain, that type of stuff, then you might want to hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon to get notified as soon as I upload new content and as soon as I go live. All right, thanks guys. Let's get on with this video. So if you don't know what icon is, where have you been? You can't have been in crypto for very long because anybody that knows anything about cryptocurrency knows about ICON. And you should too, if you don't already know about it, you should take the time to go and look at this project really seriously. And I'll explain why throughout the video. But what it is, is basically a massive platform that allows various blockchains to interact with each other via smart contracts. And their ambition is to hyper-connect the world, to use their phrase, by building one of the largest decentralized networks in the world. It's a lofty ambition, but, you know, it's got off to a pretty good start. The company behind Icon is the Daily Financial Group. Now, they're a Korean fintech company. They're valued at over 4 billion US dollars on the stock market. And they also own the coin exchange, the cryptocurrency exchange, Coin One. They where they conceived the idea for Icon over two years ago, and it had been in development for a long time, but they launched an ICO to launch the token last September uh, 2017, and it was very successful. They raised over 150,000 Ether. Uh, at the time, that was around $42 million. So that kicked it off and uh, started this uh, Korean cryptocurrency revolution. So it works by using the ICON loop chain platform, and that's to connect an ecosystem of different blockchain communities through the ICON Republic. Now, communities will be linked to the Republic at large through the community representatives called CREPs that connect to Nexus, which will be the loop chain based blockchain that underpins the ICON Republic. So you can see from the infographic behind me that the uh, smart contracts connect all these different types of industries and the end game or the aim of ICON event is to provide this platform where uh, people or companies from any industry, whether that be financial, healthcare, education, whatever, can interact and coexist on a single network. So CREPs connect to Nexus, the loop chain based blockchain that underpins this icon republic, and they act as portals for communities to interact with the Nexus. As you can see behind me, three different blockchains interacting with the Nexus through the CREPs. Now, uh, blockchains that use the ICON system can actually exchange currencies using the uh, platform's decentralized exchange, which is upcoming, and uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. So how the communities work, it's pretty simple. Each of them are their own entity, if you like, their own blockchain, and they have the responsibility for governing and maintaining their respective communities themselves. So each community will operate on its own. Um, have its own uh, blockchain, have its own consensus algorithm. So ICON itself doesn't have any control over them. They are just a facilitator con to connect them, essentially. Citizen nodes are the way that the um, average company connects to the ICON network. So community members will utilize these nodes to create the transactions and also utilize decentralized applications that are built on the ICON infrastructure. Um, but again, they have no governing power in their uh, native blockchain community, nor the uh, Icon Republic either. So the CREPs that function as these elected officials for the respective communities to uh, communicate with the uh, uh, Nexus, um, they are basically uh, chosen by their own community and they are responsible for governing uh, transaction verification and some other stuff as well. So the CREPs get rewarded in Icon currency, ICX, for their work essentially. So there are four ways you can make connections in the ICON network. You can connect between nodes in a single community. You can connect between nodes within the ICON Republic itself. You can connect between the community and the ICON Republic. And you can also connect between the different communities. 
So as we can see, the Icon Republic is basically a hub that acts to connect all these individual blockchain communities. Now, the Republic runs on the loop fault tolerance or LFT consensus algorithm. It's pretty much the same as delegated proof of stake. The C reps act as the delegates for their uh, communities in uh, Icon's larger governance structure. So as representatives, the rep, the C rep nodes, they're basically responsible for voting on Icon Republic's currency issuance, reward policy, resolving transaction discrepancies on uh, the decentralized exchange, and also for maintaining network integrity. Again, the Republic is just a communications channel. It's not a governing system. And um, the C reps themselves have absolutely no uh, control over the uh, communities themselves. So Icon's decentralized exchange or DEX, uh, it sets the currency reserves for each of the blockchain communities on the Icon uh, uh, network. And it basically acts as a um, way to transfer value and currency between all the different bodies. So it's uh, connected to the Icon Republic, obviously and enables trading across the different blockchains. Um, it also sets the exchange rates for these transactions using artificial intelligence, and uh, it manages reserve values, exchange rates, and also calculates the network's incentives as well, so the rewards that are gonna get paid out. Very cool. So decentralized apps, well, anybody can use Icon to build their own decentralized applications or DAP uh, through the what they're calling the Nexus public channel. Now, they can then be listed in Icon's decentralized app store, and anybody with a citizen node can download and use those applications. So after the token sale, they have been very busy bees indeed and achieved quite a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, a loop chain the core engine of the ICON network uh, was distributed as open source software as well. They also had a blockchain demo day with uh, developers and financial experts. Um, Chain ID was launched as well. Now, Chain ID uh, is basically a um, blockchain authorized service that runs uh, other blockchain platform services. And there's 25 institutions have collaborated on this. Um, and they launched the blockchain ID, which is basically a blockchain shared certification service where IDs are on the blockchain, if you like. Uh, Ucoin was also launched. It's a blockchain platform that makes it possible to pay, charge and transfer money using a smart vending machine. Uh, insurance auto claiming service was launched in December 2017 in association with the insurance company Kyobo Life. Uh, Weebe Coin, they partnered up with Wuri Bank, uh, which is a top tier bank in South Korea, to build a service where digital currency is used or cash as cash or card in franchises. They also had a blockchain based document management platform launch called The Loop. Uh, there was also the Blockchain Interoperability Alliance with Aeon and WaChain as well. So they formed the, for, the first blockchain interoperability alliance in the industry. And I'm glad I had a couple of coffees this morning to say that properly. So their, their priority is basically to collaborate on developing a global standard for interchain communications and transactions on the blockchain. They say they're going to achieve this by um, conducting interchange transaction research, hoping to speed it up and uh, make it more efficient, and also developing common industry standards, sharing their research and collabing on uh, protocol architecture. So Samsung are also using the Chain ID now, just recently joined up. Uh, Chain ID is basically a blockchain identification service. It allows different customers to use the same cert across any of the different banks and security companies that have joined this uh, Korean Financial Investment Blockchain Consortium, or FIBC. So uh, Chain ID has already been adopted by 11 different security companies as well. So it's already taking off. Um, it's going to... Um, be debuting on some Android and uh, Apple devices as well in the near future. So you'll be able to use it to interact with all these financial institutions. So you can see the use case for this chain ID. It's going to replace your government issued uh, digital certificates uh, by putting them on the blockchain and thus ensuring um, they are verifiable and also interoperable across the ICON platform as well. Um, Korea is the first country actually to launch this nationwide blockchain-based banking ID system. Uh, 
pretty cool, huh? So the most recent partnership is between Icon and Line Plus. Now, if you don't know what Line is, uh, you obviously don't live in Southeast Asia uh, or in Korea for that matter. Uh, it is ubiquitous everywhere. It's a messaging app that everybody uses. I mean, nobody uses Facebook Messenger really. Nobody really uses WhatsApp. They all use this Line so they've co-founded this Unchain to build Line's blockchain network. And what Unchain is, is it aims to develop various decentralized app services while building synergies with Icon to expand the blockchain ecosystem. So HK Lee, who is technical director at Icon, has been appointed as CEO of Unchain. Now he's currently developing and reviewing decentralized app teams looking to collaborate with Icon. I mentioned six of them privately chosen in yesterday's video. You can watch that up there. Some very, very interesting decentralized apps being launched on the back of Icon platform, really. And um, he has got the knowledge and experience of both the blockchain technology and the artificial intelligence uh, through his work already. So they're going to create a blockchain ecosystem fueled by this token economy where users are rewarded for the contributions on the network. And this could be potentially huge, guys. Um, again, you know, this partnership, um, you might not be familiar with Line if you live in the West, and this is what I keep saying, but trust me, guys, it is huge in Korea. It's huge in Southeast Asia. Everybody uses it. So again, if they're on... Um, online and you're, they're utilizing this un, uh, uh, Unchain as a, uh, a payment service, this could be potentially massive, it really could. So the ICO distributed the ERC20 Ethereum type tokens, uh, pretty much for ease of getting it out there and tradability on the exchanges as well. Now, you will have to actually swap these tokens if you own any ICX, you will have to swap them for the proprietary ICON token once the uh, token swap commences. Now, it's not yet happened, you'll have three months to do this, so don't panic, don't worry. Um, the token swap will be implemented through the um, Icon Next wallet and the exchanges that they're listed on as well. So it'll all be done for you, providing uh, you just click a button. Uh, it's just gonna, it's gonna be really, really simple, guys. So nothing to worry about. And again, they'll announce the date and um, you'll have three months to do it. So if you don't participate in the token swap and you are left bag holding the ERC20 tokens for whatever reason, then they will be locked after the token swap period is over and you won't be able to use them. Nobody will, not even Icon themselves. So in January, the mainnet was launched and they successfully generated the genesis block of the mainnet and minted all the ICX tokens as planned. So the mainnet launch is basically the biggest step towards achieving what they want to do, this hyper-connecting the world, as they keep mentioning, and it's very, very exciting. So now you can actually go and develop decentralized apps on top of the Icon network, and as we've seen, there are six launching already through the Icon Nest um, ICO launchpad, and we'll look at that in brief detail in a second. So ICO Next, the official wallet service of Icons open for downloads. It's a wallet that you can keep uh, ICX tokens in, but other cryptocurrencies as well. It's available for uh, Chrome, Google Chrome and PC, and they're going to have mobile versions coming in the near future for Android and Apple devices as well. So let's take a look at CoinMarketCap now. It was 11 cents 11.28 cents to be absolutely precise during the ICO. It's now at $3.76, around 46,000 Satoshi. It's performed exceptionally well. At its peak, its all-time high was around $7.30. So it's done a 60x from inception and is currently sitting around 30, 32x. Um, total supply, 400 million, but that's a little bit of a misnomer because uh, there are 800 million in total and 20% will be being dropped on that total supply every year, I believe, as a part of the um, encouragement or incentivization for people to use the platform. Circulating supply is 387 million. Volume very high, almost 100,000 Ether going through it every, uh, every day. And market capitalization just short of 1.5 billion US dollars. It's available on several exchanges, not least of all Binance, Upbit, Bitthumb, OKX, Huobi, and a few others. Uh, so yeah, very easily available. A lot of liquidity as well, as I mentioned. You know, the volume is almost 100,000 Ether every day at the moment. So as of today, it's down about 12%, and this uh, presents a bit of an opportunity for you know for people that haven't picked it up already. I still think this is an accumulator up to about five, six dollars, and maybe even beyond. Uh, this has got real potential. 
we'll look at what I think it's going to do from here uh, later on in this video but uh, with the current market dip uh, it's following the trend and it's gone down a little bit so yeah probably about now would be the time to pick it up before we see a reversal and as I said, I am holding a bag of Icon. I intend to make it my biggest holding overall, even bigger than uh, uh, Bitcoin. In fact, I am going to stock up and stack up on Icon. Um, so yeah, yesterday I sold my VeChain, as I said I was going to do in the video. I sold the majority of my VeChain anyway and bought, in, bought more Icon even. And I've sold some Wabi, which was a big bag I've been holding since the ICO and bought more Icon. And I'm going to continue to accumulate until uh, it goes up past uh, 5 $6. And even then, I'll take a look at the, the market sentiment and uh, uh, decide whether I want to continue. But yeah, I'm holding a bag of this now. I, 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 I think this is going to be a top five cryptocurrency, guys. That's my honest opinion. And that's why I'm in accumulation phase now. So just to confirm what I was saying, um, there are in fact 800 million of these ICX tokens and that the total supply on coin market cap is actually wrong. That's from a tweet directly from the Icon Foundation themselves. So let's take a look through the team now. Don Tapscott is an author. He wrote The Blockchain Revolution. It's a very good book. I suggest you go and read it. He's also been named one of the top four uh, important business thinkers in the world. Paul Vera Ditakit. Um, that sounds like a Thai name to me. Uh, he is a partner at Pantera Capital and they uh, are blockchain investors. They've invested heavily into this project and it's no wonder. Jihan Chu, he's another investor. He invested in Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin, Melonport, and he uh, ac actually acts as an advisor to Melonport, um, Quantum Project and um, OpenANX as well. He's uh, from Hong Kong, founded the Ethereum community there way back in 2014 and founded the Bitcoin Association Hong Kong as well. Uh, so he's uh, quite an important figure. Uh, Jason Best, one of 10 most influential people in crowdfunding, as named by Forbes. Uh, Yisul Cho, she studied at MIT, um, run her own startup in Korea before moving to London. And she's got a blockchain research and development laboratory there. She works for HSBC as its uh, first blockchain team, focusing on blockchain data analytics as well. And also runs the biggest blockchain community group with uh, 1,850 members in London. Simon Kim, he is a blockchain evangelist and investor. Now we know who he is. He's been uh, uh, popping up during Crypto Korea Week in different, uh, <laughs> different guises. And... He is an evangelist. He's co-founder of Canauri, which is a startup that was named one of the top 10 most innovative AI math education companies as well. So very impressive. Eddie Travia, blockchain pioneer, investor. Um, he is CEO of Coincilium. They're a London-based venture builder, accelerator, and investor in early stage blockchain technology. Um, Ishmael Malik, he is also another advisor. He's over 20 years experience in technology-related startups and entrepreneurships. He was also the founder of the world's first blockchain lab uh, within Level 39 in Canary Wharf. So a big London connection in the advisory body here. So the team is a little bit too large to go into any in-depth uh, discussion about in this video, but it's split into five different categories. Foundation Council, the Technology Department of Blockchain, the Business de uh, Department of Blockchain, the AI Department focusing on the artificial intelligence, and then there's a de Design, Communication, and Security Department as well. So the Foundation council consists of six people um, and they are at the uh, I, I guess the core of this project and they decide on a lot of governance and other um, other decisions so people are starting to realize the importance of this project community support behind this project is phenomenal um, over a hundred thousand followers on twitter tells you all you need to know really and you know every time they make an announcement as they did yesterday about the icon and line unchain partnership uh, the internet went into a frenzy over it and, and you know there's 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 no surprise there uh, this uh, project is number 19 on the cryptocurrency market capitalization chart on coin market cap it's going to be top 5 i think eventually i really do i think it's to i think it's solid uh, it's definitely leading the way in many many areas over and above some of the other projects that are higher up on the the chart than than this is and um, again it's got the community support behind it it's built it up uh, from the ICO onwards, um, they've implemented everything. They actually completed their um, roadmap at the end of 2017 and basically done everything that they wanted to do, which is really, really some achievement. So Icon are also responsible for this blockchain accelerator, D-Block. 
So you can basically apply to have your uh, um, crazy idea of a startup um, executed more rapidly than you could on your own. And this looks fantastic. Again, you know, you know, one thing I have to say about all these icon projects, websites, all the material, it's absolutely bang on. I'm never clicking on a website thinking, oh, that looks a bit nasty or no, that's not quite right. Or, you know, there's there's no flaws here. Design's good all throughout and they're keeping a sort of similar um, design, similar color, similar uh, uh, fonts and everything throughout all the different websites, which is really, really nice to see. So check out dblock as well if you want to get your crazy idea realized on the icon platform. And finally, before we move on to the verdict, uh, this is the ICO Nest or ICO Nest that is the launch pad for your decentralized apps on the icon blockchain they will have an interface that you can simply launch your uh, icon based token uh, ecosystem it looks fantastic i did a video yesterday on the first six projects to utilize this service it looks brilliant the projects look brilliant check out the video from yesterday link is above in the description so before we get into what i like about icon the links in the description below tell you everything you need to know about the project cover everything i've discussed here so first of all is a massive partnerships samsung line bloomberg you name it they're all on board going to be crucial to the success of this project and um, again integral and in, in hyper connecting the the, the world to all the aims that this project is trying to do, the partnerships are gonna, are gonna matter. And the fact that this is interoperable between different blockchains gives it an advantage over other chains that aren't cross-chain interoperability is gonna be crucial going forward in the blockchain space. This has got multiple use cases. It, it, you know, it isn't just a, a, um, a dApp, it's a platform. It can be used for many, many dApps to be built on top of it. it. It can be used to interconnect different blockchains, multiple use cases, definitely something that is key to success here. And the fact they've got the mainnet running already and you can actually build dApps on it is way beyond what other upcoming projects have achieved yet. There's still a long way to go for those projects. This is already established and it's got its main net running. Dapps are being built on it. It's way ahead of some of the competition. The chain ID as well is going to be crucial to this project's success. The fact that they've got this digital ID signature service that many banks, financial institutions and other security resources are going to use means that, um, you know, you may be forced if you're in South Korea to actually use your use the chain ID for any uh, activities that you're performing. Again, another case and a step towards mass adoption. I really, really like this ICO Nest Launchpad. I think it's fantastic. The six projects look brilliant. Again, I mentioned before, they're just way ahead of one chain. Um, the six ICOs that are launching on one chain, just way ahead, streets ahead. Just shows you how far ahead of the competition this project is. I erroneously called uh, the six ICOs on VChain yesterday. Of course, I meant one chain. I'll link to the video above so you can watch it yourself. Um, but again, the level and professionality of the one chain projects, um, you know, uh, under the the icon projects, they're just they're just worlds apart. They really are. The icon ones knock them into a cocked hat. And again, six quality projects launching already will. Um, you know, arouse more interest in this project in, in the ICON platform. The six quality projects I mentioned, again, click on the um, information icon above and you can watch my video on them. I just had a very, very brief look at them all. They look really good. They look really quality. The presentation's exceptional on all of, the, on all of them. The, uh, um, you know, the concepts are good. It, you know, it looks very, very solid. And again, you know, the, the, these first six projects launching on the back of this ICO Nest platform on Icon blockchain, just, uh, it, you know, they, they give you, they reassure you that this platform's really, it's all about it, guys. It really is. So I think this is still a bargain up to about five to six dollars, guys. I really do. I think this has got a long way to play out yet, especially with all the facts taken into consideration. This is, um, it's gone up since ICO, certainly, but there's still a lot of movement left in this, I believe. And Korea is a crypto powerhouse, guys. Uh, three of the top five exchanges are based in Korea. You look at the projects that are coming out, and that's why I decided to do this week-long Korean crypto uh, video series for this channel, because there's just so much happening now and the government seem to have uh, relaxed their restrictions a little bit. The outlook is much more positive than it was uh, three, four, five months ago. So, you know, this is a powerhouse and uh, because of the 
a rate of unemployment, quite high rate of unemployment amongst the, the youth. Uh, they're going to gravitate, I believe, into blockchain, into programming, into software. And there's a very highly skilled and educated workforce in Korea as well. So it all adds up to uh, Korea being a cryptocurrency powerhouse, in my opinion. And Icon has this established brand and profile. You see the logo in the top right-hand side. Every time you see that, you know exactly what it is. They've, they've put a lot of effort, and it's very clever the way they've done it. Everything's branded similarly. All their um, projects are branded similarly, including the um, uh, ICO, Nest, um, the Chain ID. Everything is branded in a certain manner, and it's nice. The presentation, again, on everything is impeccable. All the websites are brilliant. All the materials very well presented. Um, yeah, it's uh, top notch. And again, it's got a very strong team and advisory body too. They certainly know what they're doing and they've managed to implement in uh, such, an, uh, a, such a large amount of stuff in uh, such a short space of time. So very optimistic. And overall, it's a professional and well-run business. They don't want to have anything to do with shysters or, um, you know, influencers or whatever. They're a professional business. They've got a, a very, very professional outlook, um, professional business manner. Everything suggests that they know what they're doing. They talk a good game and it looks like they can play a good game as well. So I've calmed down a bit and we'll look at the risks. So what are the risks then? Well, the first one to me, and it's probably the biggest one, is the restrictions and regulations that may come into play in South Korea. Now, that will affect in the main ICOs launching, but also cryptocurrency regulations could damage uh, ICON going forward. And we have to remember the South Korean government has been kind of whimsical in what they've already implemented. And now they're sort of reneging and, and uh, backtracking on the uh, ICO ban and all this. So we, we've got to remember there is that potential, that risk for them to make rash decisions and stupid decisions regarding new regulations. Another risk is the competition. The platform is a very competitive space already. They're up against already established competition like Ethereum, and it's going to be hard to dislodge them from their uh, pedestal. But I believe if any blockchain platform can have a go at Ethereum, it's this one. Uh, because now the size of this one already, the uh, adoption rate that's, that's behind this project, the partnerships, this has really got the, the potential to challenge Ethereum. And uh, a lot of the other ones, they simply don't. <laughs> it's it's uh, you know it's a, it's a case of um, you know the the they're going to fight it out and it's going to be last man standing. But Icon will be one of the last men standing. You can uh, bet your bottom dollar on that. Now another concern or risk is has it found its level since uh, going thirty x gain from ICO at the moment or sixty x if you'd sold at the top? Well, I don't think so particularly, but it is a risk. The, the fact that it's, um, you know, it's accelerated so quickly from its ICO price up to where it is now, uh, it might be a concern for the investor. They might look at this and say, well, it's already done uh, 30x. I missed the train. I missed the boat. I'm not going to get involved and take, uh, you know, certainly it's less of a risk than other uh, smaller cap coins, put it that way. If, you, you know, if you're looking for a, a micro cap that you think has got a lot of potential, you're going to probably get bigger gains out of that than Icon. But again, you know, I still think that Icon's got potential. Another concern of mine is it might lose the community focus. The, uh, you know, uh, and this is down to the partnerships it's got. It's got massive corporate partners and they're not interested in, uh, you know, decentralization and the community. They're interested in profits for their shareholders. And as such, they might, you know, have an influence on this project uh, to, to move the focus away from uh, uh, the community and, and more to sort of corporate profits. And that, that's a risk. And again, the total supply is in fact 800.5 million and not uh, 400 million as on coin market cap. So you've got to bear that in mind when you're investing in this uh, particular project. You've got to bear in mind that there will be um, more tokens coming on to this circulating supply every year as they incentivize more people to use the platform. So potential gains then, I still think this has got some uh, good potential behind it. So um, in a bearish market, I think this is going to go down 10%. It's, it fluctuates, it, it flows with the, it ebbs and flows with, with Bitcoin and, and the, the entire market cap at the moment. Uh, but as it grows, I think we'll see less reliance and uh, a decoupling from Bitcoin. 
Ultra bearish, again, you're looking at maybe a 20% loss. It always seems to recover, but it's been hanging around the 3 to 4 to $5 mark for quite some time now, since January, since it had its all-time high of about $7.30. In a bullish environment, again, if we get an extended bull run, which we seem to be promised but never delivered, I can see this doing another 10x easily, guys. This is, uh, you know, even with a market capitalization now of $1.4, $1.5 billion, this could easily go to to 15 billion dollars and uh you know that's pretty impressive um a perma bull well you know um look at ethereum ethereum's got a market capitalization of 72 73 billion dollars today uh, this could easily get to, to half of that no no question about it this is ethereum's biggest competitor in my humble opinion so there we go, guys. That is my icon video. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, no Korea Crypto Week on the Cryptonomatron channel would have been complete without a look at icon itself. And we just had to do it. And I really, really enjoyed doing the video. So if you enjoyed it, please give us a like. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do so now. Click that subscribe button and click on that bell notification icon and you'll get notified as soon as I go live and as soon as I upload new content. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me today, guys. Again, very bullish on Icon.